Okay, we're going to go over top mistakes that you make and gold players make that elite players and pro players do not. I'm going to show you mistakes that even elite players make that kind of hold them back into the gameplay. And what's the first one? We got to keep it simple. It's the teammate contain. So, so important because every player I see, even in the elite division, they're overusing teammate contain. Then they say to me, hey, Neil, I keep getting done by counterattacks. Is it my tactics? Is it this? Is it that? Well, even if you do the best movement maybe you can try to save as you can see i did but the key thing is when you lose the ball do not use teammate contain and do not run out with your cdm or your center back you can see here look i'm applying so much pressure my opponent just walks around me my center back is now over here and watch when the when i get countered look at where my center back is my center back's meant to be over here so my left back can be further along if my center back was over here she wouldn't uh, my sonic my my left back would naturally default to that position and this wouldn't be a chance but my opponent got the ball and luckily through from my knowledge, I was able to move the goalkeeper and predict it. Had this gone near post, I wouldn't be there so sure that would have been a save. So mistake number one, don't use teammate contain or run out with your CDMs or your center backs. If you want to get better at FC24, I do have an FC in 24 FIFA school series. But before you skip ahead, what if I told you if you don't get better after one month, I'll refund your money. I can say that because I've been running this school for many years and thousands of people have already joined and even stay on. We go over complete in-depth gameplay tutorials, showing you the theory of it and then showing you gameplay examples in a structured format. Unlike my YouTube channel, they had a progressive learning system teaching you everything from the core mechanics to the meta so you can get better as a whole with explanations that go beyond the scope of my YouTube channel. FC School has already started with new videos coming out every single week. These videos were adjusted to the recent patches and updates so you can stay up to date and ahead of your competition. So come join thousands of others in a mature community for those looking to get better. Patreon.com forward slash nil guides or click the link down below. Now when you join we already have a library of hundreds of videos more than my YouTube channel in fact but new FC 24 videos getting added constantly so you never run out of content. Remember the biggest mistake people make is they spend thousands of dollars on FIFA points every single year thinking a team will make them better but it won't. But now it's time for you to make that change and don't forget if you don't get better after one month just send me a message and i'll refund your money that is the nil guys guarantee patreon.com forward slash nil guys link is down below in the description or click on the pinned comment below okay we're going to go over to make mistake number two very very common you're in this situation your opponent has the ball and everyone goes into this frenzy of panic where they decide to run out with the center back well if you're going to do that you're going to be in trouble. But you may see the top tier and elite players do it, but why do they do it and why can they get away with it? Well, this is the thing. Don't emulate them. Because even if someone makes a mistake with a centre-back, they have the intuition and the knowledge of when to switch to the centre-back and when to run back. So I just wanted to show you this situation, how to recover. So let's say in the event you do make a mistake, because we all make mistakes. Let's say you, uh, you commit and you think you can get the ball and you don't. As soon as you see that player making that run in behind, you run back straight away. You don't attempt to go forward, you run back with your final center back. If one center, this is a good rule of thumb, if one center back goes and commits or one CDM goes and commits, you have to run back with the other. And you can see here, I tried to play my player offside. Obviously, he's before the halfway line, so the player can't be offside. But I was hoping that the time, and you see, if my opponent played this ball straight away just over here, I would have been in trouble. So you see the mistake I made? I still continue to commit forward there. So I should have ran back. But you see, my opponent luckily wasn't a high tier player and didn't make the pass first time. But any top tier player would. And you can see when I'm running back, look what I do. I don't pass the ball to my other player. Because if I do that, there's a chance I could lose the ball. So you can see here, I take a touch. Take a touch. And then I just push the ball away. And I keep it safe. And then I go around. And then once I'm in trouble, let's say you can't get through because everyone goes to me, oh, no, when I get the ball, I can't go forward. There's no one to pass the ball to. Well, there's things you can do. If you really can't pass the ball to anyone, let's say you really can't make this pass. Let's say your opponent is overpressing with 71 depth. Simple thing is just cut the ball in the middle or switch the ball. So you can go all, you don't have to go that way. You could have gone all the way around to, you could have gone here, back to Van der Ven. I could have gone back to Van der Ven over here and then um, back to the center backs and sw swap the ball around. Look, when you swap the ball around, you're going to have all this space and you have time to maneuver the ball. And if you want, I can swap the ball back around again. Use the cop camera angle, see everything on a pitch and you'll be able to make that movement. It's very, very important when you're attacking. Let's not talk about finishing, but it's very, very important that you use the entire pitch and don't panic. Now this one is my actually my favorite one. It's the one that everyone goes to me, hey Neil, my tactics don't work. My pro players have some amazing players. They're making some amazing movements in behind. Are they playing a different game? Absolutely not. They're just triggering the ball themselves. 
This is the difference between a top tier player and an average player. All they do is they do the basics on a high level. You see when I get the ball here, look how this is so, so important. Watch when I get the ball here, something so simple that I guarantee you're not doing. When I get the ball here, you see with Morgan, I've got no one to pass the ball to, okay? Then you see I do a pass here to Swanson. Now you see I'm stuck here. A lot of players, they just get the ball here and they try to rotate and they try to make a movement. Now have a guess, what's the most important thing to do here? The most important thing, if you guess correctly, is the L1 trigger. Because when Sun moves, the entire defensive line move with Sun. And that's what creates space for the Binia. So watch, Sun gets triggered, and now my defender has to sit back. And now my opponent's defensive line is gone back. And that's now created more space for Swanson. But if I, and people always say, oh, but I do L1 triggers, but are you really doing it? Do you watch your gameplay back? And are you honestly telling me that you aren't honestly doing this all the time? Because watch your gameplay back. In a game, sometimes you forget. You get frustrated. It's all part of the game. But you have to watch your gameplay back. You see the L1 trigger, a left stick towards um, Sun, L1 trigger. Sun makes that movement. And that's what creates space for Swanson. And then I can go forward. And even then, the only reason why I got forward with Swanson is because the defensive line moved back. So that's what created that massive hole and allowed me to use that sprint boost into the space to then score the goal. So L1 triggers, they're so, so important, guys. Make sure you do them. I'm going to show you another example. Have a look over here. Nice one twos, right? We get the build up play. We get the ball down the wing. Now you get the ball. You see, look at this. You see that L1 button, how I'm spamming it. I'm saying to the players, look at this. Look, I'm spamming L1 button. I'm saying all of you run inside the box. These players, they're all running inside the box now. You see, they're running inside, they're running inside. Then when I get the ball over here, you see that player's running. Then I make a pass to Lorente. Then I'm just waiting for that player. And then I make the perfect pass. Should have been a goal. It's a penalty anyway. But it would have been a perfect goal. Now, is it because I got some amazing Eusebio or Ham, some 5 million coin player that's making this amazing run that no other player can do? Absolutely not. All it is, L1 trigger. I know here... That's Morgan. She is my striker. Now, when you do a 1-2 and L1 plus X, that player is going to make a run going forward. But you see, in this situation, I had to do an L1 plus triangle. And that means an L1 triangle makes a lob through ball. But that means the player who's made the pass doesn't make a run going forward. So when I get the ball here with Swanson, or O'Hara, should I say, I've got no one with me. So look at my left analog stick. I'm spamming the L1, but I'm saying all three of you get inside the box. You can see here, look at their hands. They're up, they're risen. That means they're getting inside the box. They're making movement for me. Then I got to wait. It's all about timing out, Lorente. Just play for time. Then my opponent makes a mistake. My toes don't run out with the center back. So opponent does that. Then I find the gap, the gap over there. And then I get the goal. Very, very simple. But it's not to do with amazing players. It's all to do with manual movement. Make sure you use the L1 triggers. And if you've got no space, create it. Don't rely on tactics. Don't rely on your players. Make sure you do it yourself. And the last one we're going to go over is my favorite. It's anticipation, knowing when and where to move. Sometimes you don't know where the danger is. You can't close it down. So for example, like here, you can see the ball has gone around. My opponent avoids my pressure very good, and he goes down the wing. Now, I don't know what's going on, but I'm just running back here. You see, I'm running back, I'm running back. I try to cut the passing lane. I got done. When I lose the ball, I forget the advanced defending. A simple slide tackle, that's it. Win the ball. Get the ball going forward. Now, keep watching. This is what's very, very interesting. You can see I'm under the pressure. My opponent catches me out. So I end up using a precision lob pass. I end up getting away. Do that space. Create the space. Take a touch away. Look at that. Take a touch. Take a touch. Find the exit. Then when I got the movement, I do an L1 trigger. I'm pushing that player going forward. And I make a mistake. I didn't take a touch away here. My opponent got the ball. But have a look what I do in my defense here. Now, you tell me, what would you do with your defense now? Think about this, pause this video and think about in your head, what would you do, okay? I'm going to mark these numbers for, let's make it like interactive, one, two, and three, and write down in the comment section what you would do in this situation. Now we're going to play it on, and you see here, I'm going to pause it. A lot of players here would make a slide tackle, and I probably I would have done as well. The thing, the reason why I didn't is because I got a yellow card, okay? But you can see, watch, once my opponent turns away, watch the mistake I don't make. I don't, my opponent's turned away. He's waiting for this player to go and create the space. I know now here's a danger area. So watch what I do. I realize I switch immediately. You see, I switch immediately. I don't wait for my opponent to turn around and make a decision. 
I use the right stick, I switch immediately. I'm using ball relative, by the way. Very, very good for right stick switching. I switch very, very easily. And then I cover the gaps. I'm covering both the through ball and the space. You see that? Anticipating where the danger is. Then once I'm here, I'm like, okay, now what? Now I know there's a player over there and it's a player. Now I know that this player I can always switch to to block that angle out. But this player here, that's a straight run towards goal. So what I do here, now you just ignore the circle button. That's just my teammate contain button. Just ignore that button for a second. But there's a bigger danger here. It's this player here. So what I've got to be over there. So watch what I do. Anticipation. Instead of running and trying to close the passing lane out that a lot of players seem to want to do. Can't be risky this year when you're defending. You can see I anticipate it. I see the pass. I'm running back. And you see the most important thing is not anticipating it here. I'm here. Why? When you try to block it out here, if you miss, the ball's gone through. It's a goal. But if you're in front of the player, if the player then makes a pass, you can then decide after and still be in a position to recover. So you can see here, I'm in the position of control. And then only once I see the ball in front of me, then I go and get the ball. So the key thing is anticipating your play. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed these top tips. I'm going to be releasing this every single week. So make sure you subscribe to my channel to see more information like this. If you want to see more videos like this, you can join my Patreon. So it's patreon.com forward slash no guys. Don't get better after one month where we find your mindset. No guys guarantee. Thanks for watching. Links down below in the description. Take it easy and I'll catch you next time. Peace.